Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs and in this video we are finally doing a sew along. So in this video we are doing a sew along to McCall's 8067 which is the shirt which is part of the top series part five. I believe it's the third top in that series. Now if you are using the old pattern it would be McCall 7629. I am following along to view B in this pattern on this pattern. So with, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this video, which is part one of a three part series. All right. So in this part, which is part one, we will cover the pattern itself, the sizing, the cutting layout and pattern markings, the cutting fabric, pattern pieces you will need in order to construct this shirt, interfacing and the fabric that I use. So let's go ahead and get right on into this part. Part All right, so series. let's go ahead and talk about this pattern. This is the next top in the top series part five. This is the shirt. Now I will be sewing to the older pattern, which is McCall 7629. You can go ahead and use the new pattern, which is McCall 8067. If you have that available, it's just because this pattern is out of print. I decided to go ahead and use this and then toss it out. And then I could still have McCall 8067 if I choose to make it again. <laughs> All right. So the first thing you will need is of course your pattern and your pattern instructions. You will need scissors if you decide to cut with scissors, one for paper, one for fabric, never mix the two there. Now I do not use scissors unless I'm at the serger or the sewing machine. I normally use my clippers at the sewing machine, but for cutting, I use rotary cutters. I use one for paper, one for fabric. I also have them labeled because I never mix the two. I also have a seam ripper just in case I make a mistake and need to rip out those seams. And then I have coordinating thread as well because I will be using some light gray fabric. Now, the only thing that I do not have here is you need some buttons. You need four half inch buttons as well. You'll need some interfacing and the interfacing that I will be using is 911 FF usable featherweight. This is a lightweight interfacing. I did not want to use midweight or heavyweight for this shirt. So I am using a featherweight um, interfacing in order to fuse the uh, facing pieces together. Now that's all the pieces that you, that's all the tools that you will need in order to construct your shirt. So let's go ahead and get into the sizing of the pattern and the alteration, which I will not be making any in the cutting layout. All right, so when you pick up your pattern from the store, you have different size range. You'll have like six through 14 and then 14 through 22. Now for me, when you pick your pattern from the drawer, you need to look at your body measurement, which is this tab right here. Now I'm just gonna tell you my measurement just to give you an idea of how you go about picking your pattern. So the first thing you wanna do is look at that little tab right here that shows the body measurement. Now my bust is a 40, my waist is a 32, and my hips is a 44. So for the bust measurement, I need a size 18. The waist, I need a 32 because that falls in a size 18. And the hips, I need a size 20 because it falls in a 44. After I look at this flap right here, of the body measurements, I will go down to the finished garment, garment measurement on the pattern and look where size 18 and 20 falls. So a size 18 finished garment measurement is a 47 and a size 20 is a 49 and a half. Well, that's too big for me for my bust. My bust is a 40 and a half. So because of that, I always want to give two and a half to three inches of ease room, you know, for if I have a bra or if I wanted to wear a sports bra that's a little padded, then I have room and I'm, it's not tight. If I wanted to wear a regular bra, I have room and it's not tight. So I always go for two and a half to three inches of ease. So two and a half inches would give me 43, three inches would give me a 43 and a half. So I'm looking at my finished garment, me garment measurement for a 43, 43 and a half, no more than a 44. 
So a 43 and a half falls in a size 14. That's the size that I would cut. So I would go back to the front of the pattern and see if my pattern falls in a size 14. This one happens to fall in a size 14. So this is the pattern that I would pick up from the fabric store, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, if they have it. So this is the pattern that I would pick up and this is the pattern I would purchase. Now, once I look at that, I would also look at how much fabric I would need. Now for a 43 and a half size 14, I'm doing view B, so I would need one and five eighths inch of fabric. Of course, I would purchase two yards just to be on the safe side for any errors as well. So this is your sizing and alteration. Let's go ahead and talk about the cutting layout and the fabric I will be using in order to construct my shirt. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the instructions. So basically, I will do, be doing view B on the pattern. The pattern pieces that you would need is two, three, five, six, and nine. That's five pattern piece. Just make note that pattern piece number six needs to be cut with the wrong side up on the fabric. So now, um, like I said, pattern piece number six, you need to have the pattern face down on the fabric and then you cut all the way around. And I will show you that here shortly. You also need to fuse pattern piece number five and six as well. Now let's talk about the pattern markings. So at the very top of your instructions, go ahead and pull out your instructions so you can see this with me. It tells you what everything on your pattern means. You have your grain line. Your grain line needs to be parallel to the salvage edge or the fold line. The fold line on your pattern means that you need to place the pattern right next to the fold and cut around. Then you have your buttonhole marking, your button marking as well, and then you have these nice lovely triangles, which means that these are notches that you need to cut, right? Cut into or around. However you decide to cut your notches is completely up to you. And then you have the last symbol that you have is a circle with a cross in it. And that circle with a cross in it, depending on where it's at on your pattern piece, it can symbolize the waistline, the bust line, or the hip line. These tells the finished garment measurement when all of them are sewn together. Now that I talked about the pattern markings, let me tell you about the pattern pieces as well. All right, the first pattern piece that you will need in, to, in order to construct this shirt is pattern piece number two, which is the front. You need to cut two of fabric. Now, I will not be making pockets. If you want to make pockets for your shirt, you can follow along with the instructions. Now, like I said, this circle right here with the cross, that is the bust line. The finished bust measurement when everything is sewn together is 43 and a half. The next one shows next to your waistline. So for me, it says a 14 is a 45 inch. It will be a little off the waist. This will not be a fitted shirt, which is great. Um, so it will be a little big at the waist, which I am perfectly fine with that. That's not a problem, because if I wanted to wear a little tank top underneath, it would not be an issue whatsoever. The next pattern piece that you will need in order to construct this shirt is pattern piece number three, which is the back of the shirt. You need to cut one unfold of fabric. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number five, which is the front facing for all views. You need to cut two of fabric and interface two as well. The next pattern piece is pattern piece number six, which is the back facing. You need to cut one unfold of fabric and one unfold of interfacing. And the last pattern piece is pattern piece number nine, which is the sleeves. I did trace the sleeves out simply because if, if I decide to make a long sleeve later on, I do not have to worry about cutting it and or enlarging it or any of that, that jazz. So I just took about three minutes to trace the pattern piece out. Now, one note that I do wanna make is because my the circumference of my biceps is a 14 inch. The finished garment measurement for the sleeve for a 14 was a 14 and a fourth. That did not give me enough ease, so I went ahead and cut a size 16, and what I will do is make sure to ease it into the sleeve cap when I go ahead and sew my sleeve. So that is a tip that I will give you that if for some reason the size that you're supposed to cut does not work out for you, go one size up and then ease it to fit into your sleeve area on your shirt. 
And just make sure that you have you write if you do what I did and trace, make sure you write all, make sure you transfer all your notches, all your dots, and then write the hem seam allowance on the pattern. And this is just basically computer paper that I use. All right, so now that I talked about the pattern pieces that you will need in order to construct this, I am going to show you the fabric that I will be using in order to construct my shirt. Now, if you've seen an October sewing make, you will know that I am using this uh, Toy Story fabric that was in my stash. Now, one thing I wanna mention, this is 45 inch fabric, so I will use the 45 inch layout. Now that I showed you the fabric that I will be using in order to construct my shirt, let's go ahead and get into some of the instructions for the pattern. All right, so the glossary for the pattern is you will want to read this in the, before we start constructing this shirt. Read the glossary if you are not familiar with E-stitch, edge stitch, finish, gathering, narrow hem, slip stitch, top stitch, or under stitch mean. Make sure you read this glossary so you are not lost when I say to edge stitch, E-stitch, finish off your seam. Now I will finish off all my seams using my serger, but you have the option of using pinking shears, folding over, you know, that seam allowance, and then do a double fold. You can use seam binding as well to finish your seam. So when I say finish off your seam, that's whatever way you choose to finish off your seam. Gathering, narrow hem, slip stitch, top stitch, and under stitch, and make sure you read that to understand what these items mean. So the um, steps that I will follow along to during the construction of this shirt will be step, I will start with step number 11 where I am sewing the shoulder seams together front to back at shoulders. I will not attach the side seams at on this step. I will wait until I have the sleeve sewn in, the sleeve cap, and then attach the side seams. You would do, uh, pat, I'm sorry, you would do step 12 and 13, apply your facing, fusible interfacing to your facing, attach the facing uh, front to back as well at the shoulder seams of the facing. You would move from step number 13 over to step 17, and that's where you attach your facing to the front edge of your shirt. Once you do that, you will go ahead and understitch your facing and turn it to the inside as well on step number 18. Once you're done with number 18, you will flip over and do step 27, which is the sleeves. You would go ahead and make gathering stitches in your sleeve cap to ease it in. Um, now I will not be doing 28 and 28 where you attach the, I'm sorry, you would stitch the underarm seams of the sleeves. I will not be doing that portion, number 28. After 27, I will go ahead and do 29 and that's create that hem. Once I create that hem, I will go ahead and attach the sleeve to the armhole using the flat method. Once I do that, I will go ahead and attach the sleeves in one continuous seam, sewing this from the sleeve all the way down to the hem of the shirt. So you will see that during the construction of the shirt as well. Once you finish with number 30, you would move over to 42, where you will create your hem. It is a narrow hem. Once you create your hem in 42 and 43, the last thing that you would do is make your buttonholes and your buttons. Once you do all of that, you are all done with your shirt. Well, that's it for this part of this three-part series. Go ahead and tune in for the next one where we will go ahead and start constructing the top. So until next time, like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So until next time, keep sewing.